Good morning, America. The Blitz in the West. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump sprinting around the final bend before the final votes. Overnight, former President Trump now pledging to put Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who backed conspiracy theories around vaccines, in charge of health care, including women's health as Vice President Harris seizes on Trump's comments when he promised to protect women, whether the women like it or not. It isn't the women who refuse to accept a future without reproductive freedom. It isn't the men who support them. With reproductive rights at center stage, this morning, the report about one 18-year-old woman who died in Texas after her mother says she didn't get the care she needed because of the state's strict abortion ban. Harris in Las Vegas with Jennifer Lopez firing up the crowd. I believe in the power of Latinos. Where are my Latinos at? As Mike Pence weighs in on the race, Trump in Arizona says he won't run again. It's never gonna happen again. This morning, the path to victory for both candidates and the new warning about foreign election interference just four days until the final votes. New details on Liam Payne's death. What we're learning about the One Direction star's final hours as police use security camera footage to piece together what happened. Save your Thanksgiving. Should you get everything at one store or shop around? And where? We'll tell you. Heroes Homecoming. The world champion Dodgers are back in Los Angeles. and ready for that party. We're live for our viewers in the West along the parade route. And it's the most wonderful time of the year. But wait, Mariah has some competition. Get ready for a very Kelsey Christmas. Jason giving us an exclusive sneak peek at something special. Plus the Christmas present overnight on Halloween for the New York Jets. Rogers to the end zone. And Wilson he has the ball. Oh, what a catch. Tis the season saving catch. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. Good morning, America. Thank you for joining us on this Friday morning. Yes, nice to see everyone. Nice to see you, Michael. And we have a lot to get to this morning, including the jobs report today. It is the last one before the election with the economy top of mind for so many voters. And let's get the race on the race for the White House. Four days until the final votes. Vice President Harris, former President Trump, both hit the battleground states in the West. And they're tearing through multiple battlegrounds from the Midwest to the South in their final sprint to Election Day. Rachel Scott starts us off in Nevada with the latest on the Trump campaign. Good morning, Rachel. Hey, George, good morning. Well, Donald Trump making this swing out west using increasingly dark and violent rhetoric against his political rivals and also revealing that he would elevate Robert F. Kennedy Jr., someone who has pushed a range of conspiracy theories, including about vaccines, to oversee public health agencies if he wins re-election. Overnight, Donald Trump speaking alongside Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Thank you, America. Despite his support for conspiracy theories around vaccines, Trump pledging to nominate him to oversee public health agencies, now including vaccines and women's health. The independent candidate dropped his presidential bid and endorsed Trump. He can do anything he wants. He wants to look at the vaccines. He wants everything. And he's going to work on health and women's health and all of the different reasons. Kamala Harris firing back online, writing simply, no. Trump campaigning out west, doubling down on his harshest rhetoric alongside ousted Fox News host Tucker Carlson. We do have an enemy from within. We have some very bad people, and those people are also very dangerous. The former president even suggesting former House Republican leader Liz Cheney, who has endorsed Kamala Harris, be put in the line of fire. She's a radical war hawk. Let's put her with a rifle standing there with nine barrels shooting at her, okay? Let's see how she feels about it. You know, when the guns are trained on her face. You know, they're all war hawks when they're sitting in Washington. Cheney responding on social media this morning, writing, this is how dictators destroy free nations. They threaten those who speak out against them with death. We cannot entrust our country and our freedom to a petty, vindictive, cruel, unstable man who wants to be a tyrant. 
Trump also once again spreading false claims about the 2020 election and the attack on the Capitol, now even baselessly claiming there's cheating happening in this race. The former president still trying to shake the controversy from his weekend rally, where a comedian made disparaging jokes comparing Puerto Rico to garbage. Trump making this pitch to Hispanics and Latinos in Albuquerque, New Mexico, a state he lost twice before, but says he can win this time. So I'm here for one simple reason. I like you very much, and it's good for my credentials with the Hispanic or Latino community. I love the Hispanic. With just days to go, the former president also announcing he will create a new cabinet position focused on reducing the cost of living. He didn't offer any details on how that would work or how it would fight inflation. But with Election Day just around the corner, Trump saying he won't run again and his rallies will end. We've done this for nine years and it's sad. I never thought of it, actually. It'll never happen. It'll never happen again. It's never going to happen again. In four years, somebody's going to be running. Could be JD. It could be this one. Now, sources tell ABC News that Kennedy has also been advising Donald Trump's transition team and has been making recommendations, including using a vaccine skeptic to lead HHS to become HHS secretary. Now, all of this as Vice President Mike Pence, who obviously served with former President Donald Trump at the White House, says he will not be voting for him this time around, but he said he won't be voting for Vice President Kamala Harris either. Michael. All right, Rachel, thank you so much for your reporting. And now we're going to go to Chief White House Correspondent Mary Bruce, who's in Las Vegas for us. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Michael. While well, the road to the White House leading both candidates out to these crucial western states as they court key constituencies. And this morning, Kamala Harris is seizing on Donald Trump's latest comments on women to hammer home her argument about abortion. Si se puede. <laughs> Overnight, Vice President Kamala Harris in Battleground, Nevada, making a big push for the state's Latino voters with some big names. I believe in the power of Latinos. Where are my Latinos at? Harris leaning on superstar Jennifer Lopez and legendary Mexican rock band Mana to get out the vote. Arriba los manos! Lopez firing up the crowd, bringing up those racist remarks made at Donald Trump's New York rally, responding to the comedian who called Puerto Rico an island of garbage. It wasn't just Puerto Ricans that were offended that day, okay? It was every Latino in this country. It was humanity and anyone of decent character. I am Puerto Rican, and yes, I was born here, and we are Americans. Harris making her pitch. My opponent is also making his closing argument to America. It is an argument that is full of hate and division. He insults Latinos, scapegoats immigrants, and it's not just what he says, it's what he will do. If elected, you can be sure he will bring back family separation policies. Harris is also counting on women voters to drive her across the finish line. This morning, seizing on Trump's comments, promising to protect women, quote, whether the women like it or not. I want to protect the women of our country, they said. They said, sir, I just think it's inappropriate for you to say, pay these guys a lot of money, can you believe it? I said, well... I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. I'm going to protect them. Harris firing back, calling it offensive. This is the same man who said women should be punished for their choices. He simply does not respect the freedom of women or the intelligence of women to know what's in their own best interest and make decisions accordingly. But we trust women. We trust women. Harris has put abortion front and center in this race, as Trump has bragged about appointing three of the Supreme Court justices who overturned Roe versus Wade. I see the promise of America in everyone here. It is in all of us. It is in all of us. 
now from here today, Harris is crisscrossing Wisconsin. She then spends the weekend blitzing the battlegrounds, including Georgia, North Carolina, and Michigan. And we now know where she will be on election night, a symbolic location for her, her alma mater, Howard University. George. Okay, Mary, thanks. Let's bring in our political director, Washington Bureau Chief Rick Klein. Rick, the polls all bunched up as we head into the final weekend. Walk through some of the different paths that each candidate has. Yeah, good morning, George. The 538 uh, battleground polls tell the story right now. The polling averages everywhere, all seven battlegrounds. No one has a, can a lead of, of more than two and a half points, all within any poll's margin of error. So to start with, if you just assume that the polls are accurate, which of course is a huge assumption, this is where things would land at the end of election night. Donald Trump, over 270 electoral votes, he would clinch the presidency for a second time. But no map is a foregone conclusion. So let's play with a scenario here. Uh, let's say that the, the polls are understating Vice President Harris or that she has a big ground operation, ekes out just enough votes to win. Here's a scenario that's probably her likeliest path to victory. She picks up one electoral vote in Nebraska and then Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, the Rust Belt, the Blue Wall holds right there. If there's no other surprises. That's 270 electoral votes. But of course, the polls could be off in the other direction or Trump is able to hold. This is Trump's likeliest path to victory. If he holds the two battlegrounds out west in Nevada and Arizona and the two southern battlegrounds, Georgia and North Carolina, he is then just one state away from clinching the presidency. Pennsylvania is the biggest prize on the map. That's the best opportunity for him. The single most important battleground state on the map, probably for either candidate, George. Rick, we have massive early vote, but does it tell us anything? Well, look, this is what we know so far. 65 million Americans have voted already. That is something. It's 40 percent of the total turnout from 2020 was still four days to go. We don't know who people voted for quite yet, but the Harris campaign has been touting what they call good news for them in the early voting. They're looking at the gender gap. So far, women making up about 55 percent of the people who have already voted. That gap was actually a little bit larger by a single point four years ago, although in 2016 uh, it was a little bit more even. So they like those numbers. The other thing we can tell is the likely partisanship of people who have already voted so far across the battleground states, a two point edge for Democrats. Of course, they like that. But four years ago, it was a nine point edge. A lot of things have changed in terms of voting in the four years, so it's hard to read too much into that. But the bottom line, there is no data that definitively says who will win and who will lose this race. The votes that will decide it almost certainly have not yet been cast, George. It's just so hard to read. Okay, Rick Klein, thanks very much. Michael? All right, thank you, George. And now there are new concerns about foreign election interference in the final days of the race. Georgia's top election official is warning of a fake video circulating online claiming to show voter fraud in the state. Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas is tracking the story. Good morning, Pierre. Michael, good morning. A warning from the U.S. government. Right now, voters are facing a barrage of disinformation from foreign nations. Overnight, Georgia's Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger claiming a new video circulating online where a Haitian immigrant says he's voted multiple times with multiple state IDs is fake, created by the Kremlin. Federal officials say it's all part of a secret campaign by Russia, China and Iran to flood U.S. social media in the last days of the election. They want to undermine American confidence in our elections and trust in democracy and they want to sow and stoke partisan discord. They want to pit Americans against each other, and they are looking for any opportunities to create rage. The bogus Georgia video follows another in battleground Pennsylvania, showing someone destroying Trump ballots. The feds say it's a Russian fake too. But the good news, according to Homeland Security's top election protection official, despite those efforts, America's voting system is completely secure. For the people that would say, prove it, give me some specifics of why you're so confident. The voting machines that Americans use to cast their ballot are not connected to the Internet. So great source of protection there. Very hard to hack something that is completely offline. And she says all the battleground states have paper ballots. You may have to go back and do a recount or do an audit. And you have those paper ballots that can actually factually be verified to say how somebody voted. The bottom line, the director says vote with confidence. Michael. Yep, that is the bottom line, Pierre. Thank you so much for that. Now to the latest jobs report. And Rebecca, it's the last one before the presidential election. Yeah, Michael, these reports are always important. This is the last one before the election, and it was weaker than forecast. Just 12,000 jobs were created in the month of October. That's below where expectations were. And there were really three major events that put a dent in the numbers. First of all, Hurricanes Helene and Milton, and then the strike at Boeing. Manufacturing jobs, for example, those fell by 46,000 in the 
month of October. Still, unemployment is holding steady at 4.1%. That is near historic lows. Over the last 12 months, the economy has generated on average a gain of 194,000 jobs each and every month. And that's still a very healthy number when you look at job creation overall. Michael? So where do they put the economy right now? So you look at joblessness, mm -hmm. historically low, economic growth, steady right now. Inflation, which had been a worldwide phenomenon coming out of the pandemic, is finally back near where economists want to see it. Families, though, are still paying about $1,000 more a month on the same goods and services as they were a year ago. That's even with wages up, so not everyone feels the boost. The Fed has been cutting interest rates, and we expect them to head lower. And consumer confidence, something that a lot of economists are also watching, is heading higher right now, and consumers continue to spend. Okay, Rebecca, thanks very much. We're going to turn now to the deadly mass shooting overnight in downtown Orlando. At least eight people were shot during Halloween celebrations. A 17-year-old is in custody. Victor Kendo is tracking the latest. Good morning, Victor. Good morning, George. Halloween is one of the busiest nights of the year for law enforcement in Orlando. Two frightening scenes at two nearby locations. Eight people shot, two of them killed. And this morning, police are sharing video. This one of the first shooting. It was just after 1 a.m. And you can see how packed downtown Orlando was. Police say somewhere between 50 to 100,000 people were out with nearly 100 officers patrolling at the time. Left hand side of the screen, they say the gunmen started shooting and then you can see those crowds desperately run away. Not far from there, moments later, another shooting. This time, officers witnessed it and immediately took down the alleged gunman. Identified as a 17-year-old, police say that he had a handgun on him at the time and he'd previously been arrested for grand theft in 2023. The victims range from 19 to 39 years old. There is no word on a motive, but police are investigating. Rebecca? All right, Victor, thank you. We are going to switch gears now to the remarkable catch overnight by New York Jets wide receiver Garrett Wilson. Will Reeve is here with something Jets fans can get excited about. Had he not made that catch, you'd probably still be sleeping. Maybe this morning, he Will. made the catch. Good morning, Rebecca. Good morning. All the Jets now have three wins and six losses halfway through the season. They've mostly buckled under the weight of great expectations, but they have Aaron Rodgers at quarterback, so they're going to get primetime games, and we're going to talk about them, especially when when there are highlight plays like this. Let's go to the fourth quarter. New York losing by three to the Houston Texans, who by contrast to the Jets have by and large live up to the hype this season. That's Rodgers to Garrett Wilson. Take a closer slow-mo look at that. Looking like the Jumpman logo. One-handed catch, gets the shin down, drags the right toe. That is a catch. The Jets are winning now. We are, we're going to watch that again because it is so beautiful. They would add another touchdown later. Rodgers throwing to his old friend Devontae Adams, who has the grab. The Jets go on to win, and they surprise basically everyone by snapping their five-game losing streak. Now, will the Jets make the playoffs? Probably not. They're, they got to win like six of their final eight games to make it in. Never say never, and if they do, uh, we will point to this game and that touchdown. And you'll, and you'll be back. <laughs> yeah, always done. All right. Thank you, Will. Well. All right, coming up, where to find the best deal on your Thanksgiving turkey. Also ahead this morning, after Halloween, hold the candy, the new study looking at sugar intake and the risk of diseases later in life. And details on the trial of the Marine veteran who put a deadly chokehold on a homeless man in New York City subway car. Stay right there on this Friday morning, and we will be right back. That's right. It's Welcome back to GMA. That is an exclusive first look at one of the songs from a Philly special Christmas party. It's a charity project from Jason Kelsey and two former Eagles teammates. And that is It's Christmas Time in Cleveland Heights featuring Jason and Travis Kelsey along with Boys to Men. The album is coming out later this month. Christmas already. Here New we are. Entry into the Christmas season. <laughs> First stop headlines we're following right now, including the warning from the Pentagon that the 8,000 North Korean soldiers now deployed with Russian forces to the front lines in the war in Ukraine are ready for battle. U.S. US officials say they now have Russian uniforms, weapons, and equipment. North Korea also test launched an intercontinental ballistic missile capable of hitting the U.S. for the first time in nearly a year. Also right now, the death toll from the flash floods in Spain has risen to at least 158 people, with many more missing. Emergency workers are still searching through floodwaters and debris this morning. More than a month's worth of rain fell in a single day. 
Also, with four days until the final vote, over 65 million Americans have voted early per the election lab at the University of Florida. And to make your voting plan, use the QR code on our screen to find out where your voting place is located or go to vote.gov. And it's November 1st, and the Queen of Christmas, Mariah Carey, is wasting no time with this new video overnight. Take a look. That's a high note. Oh, yeah. It is that time of the year. It seems to be here we're already. There, Michael. Let's we're not speed up too we're fast. All, we're all, Mariah said it, so I'm disagreeing with her. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a lot more ahead. Trevor Alt had the turkey bargains you can get before the holiday. There he is hanging out with all those jive turkeys. And um, <laughs> good to see you out there, Trevor. See you in a bit. <laughs> and now we're going to turn to new details on the death of Liam Payne. We are learning more about the One Direction singer's final hours. And Eva Pilgrim is here with the latest. Good morning, Eva. Good morning, Michael. There's still a lot of questions about how such a global superstar could have fallen to his death. Investigators now piecing together minute by minute, looking at what happened in the hours before he fell as they determine if any charges will be filed. The story of my This morning, new details about the hours before Liam Payne's shocking death. The pop star dying after falling from his third floor hotel balcony during a trip to Argentina. Police now analyzing security cameras at the hotel and nearby as they try to piece together what happened. Multiple sources with direct knowledge of the investigation telling ABC News those cameras twice showing Payne asleep in the lobby holding a bottle of whiskey. At one point, staff using an escort app to call two women to the hotel. Payne offering them 5,000 U.S. dollars but did not pay them, clearly already intoxicated. How was he physically in the lobby? Did he have trouble moving, talking, uh, or even acting rational? Because all of that is going to potentially play into how he would have acted once he got to his room. Multiple sources telling ABC News security cameras show drug purchases involving a hotel employee. Police now investigating if that employee gave Payne the drugs. Photos of the singer's hotel room after his death showing a smashed TV and drugs scattered. Investigators saying one of the star's Rolexes was apparently missing from the room. I know how it goes. Fans around the world paying tribute to the 31-year-old singer, a makeshift memorial growing outside the hotel. And Payne's father is in Argentina right now, waiting to bring him home to England to be buried. We are told the body should be turned over to the family as early as next week, guys. Okay, Eva, thanks very much. We're going to turn now to opening statements in the manslaughter trial of a former Marine accused of choking a New York subway rider to death. Senior investigative correspondent Aaron Kutersky is at the courthouse. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning to you, George. In a city that runs on its subway, this fatal chokehold has riders taking sides, either justified protection from a threat or a needless death at the hands of a vigilante. And starting today here at this courthouse, it'll be up to a jury to decide. This morning, opening statements in the trial of Daniel Penny, a Marine veteran who put a homeless man in a fatal chokehold last year on an occupied subway car. This video shows Penny restraining Jordan Neely, his arms around Neely's neck for six minutes. Prosecutors say Neely was no longer a threat after three minutes. He stopped moving after five. Neely had a history of mental illness. Police say he was acting erratically and making threats on the train, but was unarmed and never physically violent. Prosecutors concede Neely may have seemed scary, but they're out to convince the jury Penny held him down too long. The defense says Neely was insanely threatening and Penny took action to protect the lives of others. Some people say I was trying to choke him to death, which is also not true. I was trying to restrain him. I didn't see a black man threatening passengers. I saw a man threatening passengers. The case sparked protests about racial dynamics, subway safety and mental health. It took nearly two weeks to seat the jury of seven women and five men. There are four jurors of color. All of them say they're regular subway riders. Penny's lawyers hired the same jury consultant used by O.J. Simpson's defense. The idea is that we want a fair and impartial jury 
for this particular case. And so a jury consultant assists in helping make that decision of who should we get rid of, who won't be fair and impartial with respect to our side of the case. The family of Jordan Neely, a subway performer known for his Michael Jackson impersonations, says he began struggling with mental illness after his mother was killed when he was 14. Justice for, for, for my family and myself would be for Daniel Penny to go to prison or to jail. He should never walk around free after the murder, cold-blooded murder of my nephew. Prosecutors know they have a tough case here, guys. They must convince a jury to convict a former Marine of a crime he was not trying to commit. If Penny is convicted of second-degree manslaughter, he could face up to 15 years in prison. Guys? All right, Aaron, thank you. We turn now to the new study on babies and how processed sugar could impact their risk for diabetes and high blood pressure later in life. Ariel Reshef is here with the details. And Ariel, this comes with November being National Diabetes Month. As a mom of an almost one-year-old, I'm listening as well. I'm sure you're listening intently. It also has to do with pregnant women as well. Fresh off the Halloween candy binge, that new British study cautioning sugar intake during pregnancy and the amount of sugar a baby eats during the first couple of years may affect their health later in life. Researchers found if sugar is limited during a baby's first 1,000 days, it reduces the chance of type 2 diabetes by 35 percent and high blood pressure by 20 percent in middle age. A low sugar diet also appeared to delay the onset of chronic illnesses. The protective effects were strongest for individuals whose sugar was limited during pregnancy and for at least the first six months of life. The study of about 60,000 people does not prove that limiting sugar will prevent diabetes altogether, but it can cut the risk. The CDC recommends that less than 10% of total calories in your diet should come from sugar, and even stricter limits are recommended by the World Health Organization and the American Heart Association. So put down the candy, guys. Put down it's the hard candy. after or Halloween, most of it, at least. Most of it, exactly. Yeah. All, all within reason. All right. Thank you for that, Ariel. Very important news there. With Halloween in the rearview mirror, it is time to talk turkey. It's November, after all. And this morning, we have ways to help you save on your Thanksgiving meal. Trevor Alt is at Double Brook Farm in Hopewell, New Jersey. He is making friends and sharing all the details with us. Good morning, Trevor. Yes. Good morning, Rebecca. Yes, I do not learn my lesson, and this backfired holding a turkey on me last year. We'll see if I can maintain. Yeah, we're going to be fine. We're on to the next holiday, and we want to make sure that you can get the most bang for your buck, that you can stretch your dollar for that full feast, turkey or other things. I think these guys would encourage getting other things, too. Plenty of stores are already rolling out deals that you can take advantage of right now. It seems Thanksgiving Day is upon us. I haven't even finished eating all my Halloween candy. You don't have to throw out the chocolate, but it is time to start prepping for Thanksgiving. Turkey prices are expected to fall this year, and major grocery stores are already competing for your dollar. It can create a little bit of confusion, but it's also an opportunity for strategic shoppers to save a lot of money on groceries before Thanksgiving. Plenty of big box locations have rolled out promotions you can take advantage of, like wholesale club store BJ's, where if you have a $150 transaction between now and November 14th, they'll give you a Butterball turkey for free. There are so many turkey-centric promotions that you should do everything in your power to avoid paying full price out of pocket for a turkey. You can also score plenty of deals for the entire meal. This week, Target has announced a $20 meal for four, $5 cheaper than it was last year. Walmart is offering an inflation-free Thanksgiving meal. From now until Christmas Eve, 29 items serving eight people for less than $7 per person, which is also less expensive than it was last year. And Aldi is offering a Thanksgiving package that feeds 10 people, costing about $4.70 per person. But experts say the key to maximizing your savings is to keep your eyes open at several different spots. Just because you're getting your free turkey from someplace doesn't necessarily mean that same place is the best place to get the best deal on everything else. So I'm always an advocate of shopping around. And 
According to USDA data, the supply of turkeys this year has dropped a little bit. It's down about 6% or so from last year. That decrease in supply might mean a little bit of an impact on pricing, another reason to look for a deal. You can also consider, though, buying directly from a farm, like maybe you see a TV star here at Double Brook Farm in Hopewell, New Jersey. You could buy directly from them online. There are lots of options, and there's some very nice guys. Guys. All right, Trevor, we barely hear you at the end there with all the goblin, but thank you so much. We appreciate you going out there for this much, much needed segment. Now with our play of the day, and this morning, we are Southeast Strong to celebrate the return of the famed Biltmore as Asheville, North Carolina recovers from Hurricane Helene. Gracie Matisse, a reporter for our ABC affiliate WLOS, is at the estate to preview its holiday reopening. Good morning, Gracie. Good morning to you, Michael. Yeah, that is right. You know, the Biltmore, it's not just a beautiful place to visit. It is a beacon of hope for the community. By reopening tomorrow, they're letting the rest of the country know that Western North Carolina is strong. They are going to rebuild into the place that people love to come visit. But, you know, we're in unprecedented times right now. The Biltmore has only been closed for this amount of time um, for COVID and for World War II. But let me tell you, staff are working hard, racing to open for tomorrow tomorrow um, and they're doing Christmas big this year. You see the tree behind me. This is a 28 foot Fraser fir had to be hauled in through the front door by 45 people just to get this thing up. Um, but it really is the mainstay here. Uh, staff tell me that they are uh, working hard. They not only want to make this Christmas uh, fun for the folks that are coming in from out of town to visit, but they also want to uh, make it a great experience for the folks that have been through so much right here in Western North Carolina. Um, so if it's not too early for the Biltmore, it is not too early for me. I want to wish a Merry Christmas to you all in the studio. Well, thank, thank you, you, Gracie. We really appreciate that. And it's love to see people in Asheville, North Carolina, feeling strong and hopeful again. All right, coming up, Deals and Steals this morning. They're all from Oprah's favorite things. Stay with us. Good morning, America. It's 8 a.m. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump blitzing the West. Overnight, former President Trump now pledges to put Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who backs conspiracy theories around vaccines, in charge of health care, including women's health. As Vice President Harris seizes on Trump's comments when he promised to protect women, whether the women like it or not. It isn't the women who refuse to accept a future without reproductive freedom. It isn't the men who support them. With reproductive rights at center stage, this morning the report about one 18-year-old woman who died in Texas after her mother says she didn't get the care she needed because of the state's strict abortion ban. Baby, there's nothing holding me back. Not holding back. Sean Mendez talks about his decision to walk away from fame two years ago, canceling the world tour, his mental health journey bringing him back to the spotlight with new music, and his relationship with Camila Cabello now. Let's get loud for deals and steals on my favorite things. Oprah is ready for this. Let's do this. A dozen Oprah faves that you'll love. Don't miss it. And ready, set, race. We're counting down to the New York City Marathon this Sunday with the runners who never thought they'd be at the starting line. I thought, you know. I thought everything was over. Plus, the top tips for runners from a marathon expert and how to carry that finish line feeling into the rest of your life. As we say, Good morning, America! Live in Times Square, this is GMA. Good morning, America. There's our marathon crew, including GMA staffers. You know what? They're going to go for it, too. <laughs> so proud of them. But there's more than 50,000 runners who are going to take this to the streets of the Big Apple for the largest marathon in the world, taking a 26.2 mile run through New York's five boroughs. Be faster than driving, I could tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. And it's always a fun weekend here in New York with the marathon. And we are cheering everyone on each step of the way this morning and helping the fellow racers stay hydrated. We have much more with all of them just ahead. First look at the top stories breaking today. We start with the latest on the race for the White House. Four days until the final votes, Vice President Harris, former President Trump, both hit battleground states in the West. I want to go back to our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce. Good morning, Mary. 
George, good morning again. Well, the road to the White House leading both candidates out here to these critical western states courting key constituencies, especially Latino voters. Overnight, Kamala Harris leaning on superstars J-Lo and legendary Mexican rock band Mana to help get out the vote. She is also, of course, courting women to help get her across the finish line. And this morning, she is seizing on Donald Trump's new comments. The former president promising to protect women, quote, whether the women like it or not. Harris calling those comments offensive, saying Trump does not believe women should have the agency and authority to make decisions about their own bodies. And overnight, Trump speaking alongside Robert F. Kennedy Jr., pledging to nominate him to oversee public health agencies, including vaccines and women's health, despite RFK Jr.'s support for conspiracy theories around vaccines. Kamala Harris responding to that suggestion with just one word, no. Now from here, both candidates continue to blitz the battlegrounds. They will both be out in Wisconsin today. Michael, four days left to go. Four days to go, Mary. Thank you so much for that. Now to a new investigation from ProPublica and to the case of a Texas teen who died of complications from her pregnancy after her family said the care she needed was denied until it was too late. Rachel Scott is back with the story. Good morning again, Rachel. Hey, Michael, good morning to you again. Yeah, it's been a year since Candace Fails lost her 18-year-old daughter. She was six months pregnant when she started experiencing severe pregnancy complications. She went to the emergency room three times, but this morning her mother tells me she ultimately died because she couldn't get the care she desperately needed in a state that has one of the most restrictive abortion bans. She loved to sing. She loved to dance. She was a wonderful soul. Candace Fell says her daughter, Nevea, at six months pregnant, first started complaining of stomach pain and nausea. She went to the emergency room at Baptist Hospitals of Southeast Texas. She's in a lot of pain. Her stomach's hurting her. Candace says Nevea was diagnosed with strep throat and didn't ever receive an ultrasound. She was sent back home. When the pain didn't go away, she went to the emergency room at Christus St. Elizabeth, but was told her fetus still had a heartbeat and that she was fine to leave. It wasn't until her third visit to the ER that she says doctors realized something was terribly wrong, saying the fetus no longer had a heartbeat. They were saying her blood pressure keeps dropping. Um, she's losing blood. She was like, Mom, I don't think I can do this. I was like, Nevea. I told her, I said, I love you. I said, you can do this. I said, God made us strong. You can do this. ProPublica releasing an article this morning after an investigation into her death, finding that it took 20 hours and three emergency room visits to be admitted to a hospital, even though her condition was worsening. They say the doctors did two ultrasounds to confirm fetal demise. And I'm hollering at them and I'm telling them to save my daughter, to save my daughter, do something. Candace says she believes her daughter didn't get the care she deserved to save her life because of the state's strict abortion ban. I felt like the doctors were more concerned about the baby than her life. I'm frustrated how these laws are affecting my daughter from getting justice that she deserves. Krista St. Elizabeth told us it, quote, believes the care provided to this patient was at all times appropriate and compassionate. However, due to HIPAA and privacy, we cannot comment further. Baptist Hospitals of Southeast Texas did not respond. Yeah, so ProPublica reached out to the doctors that were involved. They did not hear back with their requests for comment. Texas, of course, has one of the strictest abortion bans in the nation. It does include a narrow exception to save the life of the mother. But look, we've talked to doctors in this state. They say these laws are confusing and the way that they are written, it has changed how and when they possibly intervene. Of course, any doctor that performs an unlawful abortion in that state could face fines, prison time and loss of license. This is just another ripple effect of Roe versus Wade being overturned. But this morning, that mother is pleading for help, guys. OK, Rachel, thanks very much. Coming up on our GMA morning menu, Sean Mendez on his decision to step away from the spotlight at the peak of his fame. Also ahead, the soon-to-be marathoner. They're ready to hit the ground running for the New York City Marathon. Plus, deals and steals are all Oprah's favorite things. Tori Johnson is here with Oprah Daily Creative Director Adam Glassman with a dozen great products. And Sam has two special guests. Hey, Sam. Well, I haven't stopped talking to them, so I don't know if I'm really ready to introduce them. But we're here with Jennifer Grey and Jesse Eisenberg to talk all about what looks like a really great movie. Jesse, how are you feeling this hour? I'm feeling exhausted watching these people run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll sit down and have a chat. We come back right here on GMA. Stay with us.
And we are back with our GMA cover story, Sean Mendez's mental health journey. Singer returning to music after stepping away from the spotlight two years ago. He talked about his decision in an interview with the New York Times. El Reshef is back with the story. Good morning again, Ariel. Good morning again to you, George. Before he called it quits, music insiders estimate Sean Mendez's 2022 2023 world tour could have brought in roughly $100 million, but he stepped away to protect his mental health. And now he is back in the spotlight, and this time he says he's doing it on his own terms. In his teens and early 20s, he was the vocal phenom behind hits like There's Nothing Holding Me Back. But this morning, Sean Mendez telling the New York Times about the darkest chapter of his life and the struggles that led him to call off his multi-million dollar tour. The shows I could get through and find beauty in them, he says. But when I would step off stage, I just didn't recognize myself. I was a shell, like talking to a wall. His decision to forego fame for his mental health is one he admits was painful but necessary. Letting people down sucks, he says, but adding a huge lesson for me in becoming an adult, which is that you don't get to live this life without hurting people. Mendez also candid about his very public on and off relationship with pop star Camila Cabello saying if something was to happen in my family and if something was to happen to me, she'd probably be the first person I call to this day. Our relationship is teaching me what love means in a big way. Their relationship really captivated the public and then so did their breakup. We're seeing people be more cognizant of what it takes to, to be an artist in the spotlight, what it means for them, and you know what kind of relationships they can continue to have as artists and with their fans. Everything hurts me still the same. Now, as he prepares to launch his fifth album, Sean, and embraces the next phase of his career, Mendez assuring himself healing takes time, more than you want. And it's beautiful because you can be healing and expressing at the same time. You can be joyful and grieving simultaneously. I think a lot of people that resonates with a lot of them. And Mendez's new album, Sean, is due out November 15th. He says he's now approaching his return surrounded by the love and support of his family, and he's consciously playing more intimate venues. He also says in this next chapter, it's more music, more love. Michael. Yeah, we wish him the best day, Ariel. Thank you so much for that. And we're gonna, we have more than 50,000 runners from nearly 150 countries. We're going to lace up in less than 48 hours for the TCS New York City Marathon. Our Will Gans is one of those runners, and he has some incredible stories of folks running the race who thought they would never be there. Good morning, Will. Good morning, Michael. Yeah, I'll be honest. When I signed up for the New York City Marathon, it was simply for the attention. I had big plans to wear that medal and that little silver cape all the way into 2025. But what happened instead is that I've been introduced to some of the most inspiring people I've ever met in my life. 26.2 miles, more than 50,000 runners, all five New York City boroughs, 43,000 bagels and 70,000 gallons of water, and this year a record 599 charities represented at the TCS New York City Marathon, raising millions. I'm running the marathon this year in memory of my dad. We lost him to leukemia last year. For each and every runner, I am running the marathon for my brother. My brother has always been my biggest role model. That journey to race day is personal. I want to motivate my daughter, who is eight years old, and show her that you can accomplish anything. This year, LaDawn Jefferson, only two years ago, the mom and grandmother from Brooklyn faced a devastating stage four cancer diagnosis. I was getting ready to die. I thought this was it. But LaDawn ran headfirst into treatment, refusing to be sidelined. Even though I was sick, but I was like, no, I, I need to do something. And in New Jersey, newlyweds Kevin Orsell and Jasmine Morell are gearing up for their first marathon as a couple. We train together. Um, you know, we go through recovery process and all of that stuff together. Running with the New York Roadrunners team Inspire, both overcoming obstacles posed by glaucoma to cross the finish line. It'll progress over time to no vision at all. I'm very cued into what's going on around me. For so many runners this weekend, the miracle is not that they cross the finish line. I am a blind black kid born in Haiti, and here I am now. If I can do it from where I'm from, then anyone can do it too. 
I'm so happy to say that as of today, LaDon Jefferson, who joins me now, is what doctors call NED, no evidence of disease. That's incredible. LaDon is here along with Kevin and Jasmine. All right, you guys, it's crunch time. How are we feeling about Sunday? I feel very exciting. Yeah? How about Same you guys? Here. Very exciting and nervous. Depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling great. Can't wait to cross that finish line. I'm with you guys. Been. Well, thanks for being here. Michael, over to you. All right. Thank you so much for that, Will. And, you know, I'm here with Bex Gentry from Peloton. She's Ooh. run six. Now, now, Bex has run 16 marathons herself and, and was even the first non-elite female runner to finish New York City Marathon in 2019. Well, we've got some other incredible marathoners here who are ready to hit the road. That's right. So, Bex, let's get started. I can only imagine when you're out there, there's so much excitement, mm -hmm. so many nerves, yeah. but you have to breathe, right? So, is there some breathing exercises you should do before you start the race? Absolutely. I'm going to take these guys through it too, just in case it helps them on race day. So, the best thing that I suggest you do is think about breathing out and in instead of up and down. So you want to be really expanding outwards and you can put your hands actually on your rib cages here and feel how it goes out and in. Oh wow. I'm gonna feel it out. Yeah, right? We think it goes here, up and down. And then if you start doing that when you're running the up and down, you're gonna get all discombobulated and relax yourself by doing that out and in. Now don't put your hands on when you're running. Yes. <laughs> run, yeah. run the whole marathon like that to breathe, okay. That's a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now let's move to our second group. Let's do okay, it. let's go over our second group Woo! of marathon runners. Well, they're, this group here, they're representing the middle of the race, right? Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure in the middle of the race, it's going to be tough physically and mentally. So how can they get through it? Okay, so you can, you can take it two ways. You've done half of it. And oh boy, I've got the other half to go. Or you can celebrate. I've done half and I've got the rest of it to go. So think about the positive sides of it. Think about how much you've achieved already and enjoy that moment of halfway magic because it's magic. It's magic and you got it. You got All it. Right, you got it. <laughs> All right, so let's move over here. It's, it's, it's normal to hit a point where you feel like you not, may, may not be able to, you know, like finish the race. But how can you can tell if that's just nerves or if it's actual pain? If it's actual pain, stop. Mm. Because you only have one body. This race has been around for many, many years and it's going to continue to be around. So you don't want to ruin your body in the uh -huh. moment with pain. If it is fatigue, if it is nerves about the finish, that's what the training was about. You get through it. Think back to those long runs. Think back to those hard workouts and that you got through those. You can get and through And you today. can get through this. I like that. A little positivity. Okay. This is uh, the best part of the race to finish, oh. okay? And we have four of our staffers here yeah, who are actually going to run the race to New York City Marathon. And then well, congratulations, you, you, you four. Yeah. I mean, really, really proud of you. Thank you. Doing something that I could never do. I'll be honest with you. But there's nothing like the joy you feel when you finish the race, oh, yeah. which Will's already anticipating that. So <laughs> how, but, but how can you make that, that joy last when the race is over? Wear your medal. Keep those medals around your neck. I will tell you, they feel heavy. You've just run 26.2. You're going to feel like you're walking like this. <laughs> but wear it. Show it off with pride. Get out of the finish area. As beautiful as it is, it's chaotic. You need to get out, see your family, see your friends. Mm. And one tip for you. Once you have showered, whenever that is, no judgment, when you have showered, stretch then. Okay? Right. You're warm. Redo it then. All right. Shower and all that other good stuff. Now I got to throw it over to Ginger. has got the weather. Go ahead and run through that. Go ahead, Ginger. It's all yours. We turn now to a special Deals and Steals, Oprah's favorite things. Tori Johnson is here with Adam Glassman from Oprah Daily. Here we go with one of my very favorites to begin uh, us off. One of our favorite things, too. This is Anastasia Beverly Hills. The first thing that Oprah picked for favorite things this year, which is a lip Ooh, set of six gorgeous beautiful. lipsticks that work on every skin tone. Anastasia is Oprah's eyebrow guru. Mm -hmm. You use her stuff. Kim Kardashian uses her stuff. Everyone J Lo. <laughs> Everyone does. The makeup is sensational. We have a wide assortment of everything from concealers and foundations and body oils, you name it, and 
everything to create the perfect brow mm -hmm. as well. And perhaps best of all is that today it's half price. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We love it. Okay, okay. Rebecca, yes. birding and bird watching is a thing these days. This is Feather Snap. It's really cool because it is solar powered, okay. Wi Fi enabled. Okay. So you feed your bird, but it has a camera. So you could watch live feed on your phone about all these birds. And it helps you even determine the species. Oh, I know, it's it It's like too. super fascinating. As yes. a techie, even if you're yeah. not a birder, yes. as a techie. This is fun. It's, it's so really cool. fun. That's why we liked it, and that's why it's a favorite thing. And it's 50% off plus free shipping wow. from Feather Snap. We love okay. that. We love everything Tracy Ellis Ross, yes. including her hair and her hair care line. She's so gorgeous. She spent two years creating this hair dryer. Mm -hmm. It has four attachments. It works perfectly on textured, curly, coily hair. So we have that, which made the list this year, plus an assortment of all of her hair care, from shampoo, conditioners, hair masks, brushes, you the name it. The shampoo smells I know. so good. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Or, uh, Elena yeah. and I obsessed yeah. with the scent on this, uh, but she's more obsessed with the formulas and how fabulous they work. <laughs> Everything slashed and half starts at 850. Excellent. Okay. Now, bathing is one of Oprah's hobbies, so every year for favorite <laughs> what things. What a great hobby. I know. Some people bird watch, she bathes. <laughs> I'm telling you, we always have to have a great bubble bath. Archipelago <laughs> makes the most delicious one that is so it's soothing. It's pretty. It is gorgeous. Packaging is key for us. Mm -hmm. Three fabulous scents. This is the charcoal and rose. We have milk, and we also have lavender. And it also comes in a hand wash. And the scent on that, oh, it's yeah. just like a delicate. subtle, yeah. it's just a subtle, really mm. delicate. Yes. Delicate, but yeah. it looks gorgeous. And it's not that it's chemically it's smell that you at sometimes all. get and at all. And the bubbles are perfect. It's not too bubbly, just bubbly enough, mm, which is what perfect. you want in a bubble bath. You got it. And you know what else you like? 50% off, yes. 12 to $22. Okay. These are phenomenal gifts. Okay. Speaking okay. of another phenomenal gift. Yes. Phenomenal gift, gift. <laughs> launching today on Favorite Things and GMA. This is from a company called Leo and Luca. Cute they, name. Really cute I name. Yeah, I know. So I'm a fan. I know. <laughs> Bubble letters are really a hot thing right now yeah. in fashion. Oh, you got They're an very R. trendy. You have an R for Rebecca. Yay. What's cool about this, you could oh. wear it two ways. The chain, which is plated in 18 karat gold, or the choker that Tori's modeling. Which right is like here. the super in leather, thing right now, yes. Super so in. in. You know, ways. I wear yeah. so many necklaces to this studio. I have never walked in and had more compliments than today for this one. It's just, it's so substantial. We've looked, Adam and I, I think, have looked uh, we've been at looking for months. So for many initials. The, the, these it looks are great. Phenomenal. And I love that you can change it up. So if you want a longer with the chain or you want shorter with the cord, you get both with this. For thirty dollars, so yeah, thirty dollars, excellent. Really I know. Okay, I know. this is going to go over well as I well. I know. Uh, these are adorable bathing products for kids. Founded by a gentleman who was a counselor working with kids in trauma, and what okay. he realized is that you could make bathing fun for the mm -hmm. kid and also easy for parents. You just add liquid soap in here. You take this into the bathtub. It becomes a washcloth. It's really adorable. We also have these hooded towels, which are great. So cute. And then these little numbers and letters that educate and entertain in the bathtub. They really at do. At the same time. And, and they're, they work as, yeah, they be, double as yeah. teethers as well <laughs> in my house. Cash and half, stock up on these, 6 to $15 with our deal. Thank you, Tori. Thank you, Adam. And more of Oprah's favorite things coming up. And next, Jennifer Gray and Jesse Eisenberg are here. Stay with us. Sometimes she always told me she was grateful for her struggle. Welcome back to GMA, live from Times Square. And we are back with Jesse Eisenberg, Jennifer Grey. They star in the new movie, A Real Pain, which follows two cousins traveling through Poland to honor their late grandmother. Welcome back to both of you. Great to see you guys. Movie is getting rave reviews, and Jesse, you wrote it, you directed it, you star in it, and I read you were inspired by an online advertisement. Yeah, strangely <laughs> enough, um, I had originally set this movie in Mongolia, and it was about these two cousins, the same characters that Kieran Culkin and I play, and we were in Mongolia, and I was like just having trouble kind of getting through the script, and when an ad popped up that said, Auschwitz tours, and then in parentheses, <laughs> with lunch. 
And I was like, what, what does that mean? What does that mean? Going to this place of extreme historical trauma, but kind of still wanting to maintain the creature comforts of your middle class life. So like, I was started to think about what does it mean to travel to these places of horror and of objective mm. historical trauma, uh, but trying to maintain your kind of creature comforts of your life. And so th one of the themes of this movie is, you know, this group of which Jennifer is, you know, um, on this group touring Poland and these tragic sites, but kind of also have Having a you know creature oh. comfort, staying at the Radisson middle class existence, but then seeing trauma during the day. And, and Jennifer, you play Marcia, who the divorcee, who's who's is on the tour the tour group, but you're going through a divorce. What was it like working with Jesse and working with the cast? Well, um, I was playing this woman who was in one of those rocky transitions of life mm -hmm. where your life is just blown up. You don't know who you are. You don't know what you're doing, and you're, she's just trying to somehow reclaim some part of who she once was and so she decides to go to Poland because she wants to go back to what's real and her mom had fled the camps when she was a little girl and so she had basically her mission was I want to get out of LA I want to go back to Brooklyn where I'm from and I want to feel something real and then I got to work with this kook <laughs> Cool. Yeah. This, so that's the, so that, I love this relationship. I love it. You, call, you, you can I say mean, that to your oh, national oh, team. Yeah, that's love. Yeah, that's that's love. love. And no. private and at our initial interview. Yeah. 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 Well, let's take a look at a clip. Let's check it out. Look at her. Who? And that woman, Marsha. She's walking alone. We should go talk to her. We just met her. Can you remember? She's got this, like, deep sadness behind her eyes, you know? She does? Yeah, you didn't notice that? During the introductions? No. I, I think we should check on her. Benji, maybe she wants to be alone. Sorry. No one wants to be alone, Dave. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. Hey, why are you walking alone? <laughs> the cast yeah. is epic. You should yeah. see it just for the cast. But um, in that, Jesse, um, uh, that's Kieran Culkin. Yeah. And he's kind of known for being spontaneous in yeah. his acting. Yeah. So how do you structure and plan, you guys, around spontaneity when you're doing a scene? Uh, thank you so much for asking that. Kieran is truly like a marvel. I mean, every review of this movie is like, oh, this is like the great performance of the year. He's truly brilliant in this movie. And, uh, He's all right. <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but like on the set, I didn't know. I had been living with this character in my mind for, you know, three years. And then he came on set and was just kind of like, took over the set. You know, I had all these shots planned, these beautiful shots, you know, and everything, and he just wouldn't stay on his marks and wouldn't <laughs> do what I asked him. And so we just had to take the camera off the dolly. We had to like scrap three months of shot planning. Wow. And it was just amazing. You just, but he was so brilliant and spontaneous and fun that it worked out really well. And we all had to really like fall in just to compensate. We'll just do whatever you want. <laughs> 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 is this good, Am I, is this good? Okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what did you think when you heard you're gonna be starring with Kieran Culkin? I was thrilled because I had just been watching Succession. Mm. And he was the one that really, because I'm a freak, <laughs> you know, in the ways that you all know I'm a freak. Yeah. And I just responded to him. I responded to him in that show. I thought they were all brilliant, well, but he had this great. wild magic help, right? and yeah. this yeah. complexity yeah. and uh, everything about him was so surprising like and you know, real and just, he's a fascinating actor and he's a fascinating actor to work with. And during filming, you two found out something. You both are a lot alike. How so? Um, I think it was just like a We're Jewish? anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> One way. <laughs> just a certain kind of unhealthy level of anxiety and uh, <laughs> yeah. And um, I made me feel like I wasn't nervous. There is this like weird thing. When you put I'm like, two, am I more nervous? When you put more two nervous. people like us in a room, in some ways it cancels each other out. So we're like, oh my God, you, you seem awful. And she kind of thinks <laughs> the like, same thing about I'm like, me. Ew. <laughs> How can your wife stand you? Yeah, but, yeah. We're, uh, but we're probably much, ex probably exactly the same. Yeah. How did it take so long for you guys to work together? Yeah. <laughs> um, different coasts. I think that's what it is. I'm scared of LA, and why do you not come to New York more? I think it's because I was married in LA. For uh, 20 years, just like the character. It. Now okay, I'm we'll back. back. It's great to see you together. A real pain is in theaters now. We are back with more of a special edition of Deals and Steals with Oprah's favorite things. Two of my favorite people, Tori and Adam Glassman from Oprah Daily, are back. 
All right, let's dive into it. What oh, we got? We're going to start with softies. Oprah lives in softies loungewear. Feel it. This Ooh. is called the Marshmallow Lounge Set. I actually have There's, it. Oh, so you do, yeah. you see? There's a reason it's called Marshmallow because it's He's so luxurious. He's very fabric. familiar. This year's selection is the V-neck that comes with the pants, sophisticated colors, wear them around the house. Oprah travels in them. You could do errands in them. I mean, they are perfect loungewear for everybody, and everyone looks good in it. And that's why it's made the list yeah, so, many, so times, many times, year after year. Only here, though, you're going to save 50% wow. on the set. We've got a big variety of colors. You're going to want to grab them today. Yes, okay. And as you know, Oprah loves her eyewear. So Peepers is one of our favorite because they really create stylish, bold, beautiful readers at an affordable price. Look at Ooh, you right there. There you go. This year's selection are I these. I can read. You can read. You can see they come in all strengths. They are scratch resistant. They have blue light blocking lenses. Wow. At this price, you honestly want to get a few pairs because you want to keep them in a different room, in your car, in your bag, and you name it. It's so good. I yeah. mean, when you say that Oprah sometimes chooses to match her clothing to her eyewear. Oh, yes, she does. This, She'll pick her eyewear first and her to. outfit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? The Some eyewear people first. do, That's you know, like the outfit what, first. That's what Michael yeah. does with watches, right? You <laughs> pick the clothes. 15% <laughs> off. They start at $11, and we have sun readers online. All right. From person, this is very cool. This is a travel case that you okay. can store your makeup and your jewelry right in it, easy breezy. Oh. But the secret about it, it has a secret LED light. So you go like this and a mirror. So you can touch up your makeup in the dark. You can also take that, look, you're doing there you it right go. there. So no matter where you are. No matter where you are, you can in also a, just in, take in, it in off. Restaurant, oh, it comes airplane. on. It comes on and off, and you can pop this oh, right wow. into your purse. Wow. You leave this in your hotel room, you pop this in your purse, and you can see what you're doing. Genius. Such yes. a fabulous gift. These today, Michael, with mm. our deal, $24. That's a really good deal. Bucks. That's that a really great price. Deal. Okay, yeah. we love all things truff. I know you love all things truff hot sauce. I crush this stuff. I know. You well, yeah. launching today that they created for us her favorite things. Brand new gift set. Jalapeno lime with habanero. Mm -hmm. This gift set comes in this beautiful box. You could just bring it as a hostess gift. You could pocket it. You're going to do that right now. I was going to say, why you give just, it away? I, 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 said, I like it. I, I, I give this instead of candles to people now when I show up at people's houses. It is delicious because it is truffle infused and the hot sauce is great. You said if you eat at Oprah's house, you expect you will to have find truff this. on the table. If you mm -hmm. open Oprah's purse, you will find <laughs> it in there. Truly. Good day to get your gifts because all the sets from Truff today are 50% off. And they say the best gift to give it's the gift to yourself. There you go. Yes, there well, you there go. you go. Right. Okay. Cozy Earth. Cozy Earth. I have to say that bathing and, and sleeping are two of Oprah's pastimes. She is very, <laughs> very particular about her pajamas. She loves Cozy Earth. They are the most comfortable. Light. They are chic. They are light and yeah. breathable. Thank yeah. you for noticing that. She saw these colors and these stripes. She ordered them all for herself, and she's ordering them for her friends that appreciate cozy. There you go. Yep. Plus, we've got uh, more. We've got men's and women's loungewear as well online. All 50% off today from Cozy Earth. Plus, free, free shipping. Free shipping. That's right. And, and then, then finally, finally, I mean, this Oprah is Oprah Daily. From Oprah Daily, you know, journaling changes people's lives. Oprah has been doing doing it for years. This is our brand new one about being unstuck. This is perfect for anyone who's in a rut, who really is going through a tough time, going through a life change. Oprah wrote this journal, all the exercises, all oh, the wow. quotes. You know what I like everything. best about these journals? Tell me. Typically journals, every page is blank and it's just a place for yeah. you to like put down yeah. your thoughts. And sometimes it's really hard to get the thought from your head to the paper. These have all of these brilliant prompts from Oprah and her team that really helps you to help yourself. So that's what I love about this. It really then, is life changing, I have then, to say. And then these cards. These cards are beautiful. It's a hundred questions everyone should ask. It's a beautiful card set that you ask yourself, you ask your friends, you ask your family. You can do it right at the dinner table or every morning. Read I this one it. right here. What makes you feel most alive? Being uh -huh. with you and being able to tell America that everything from <laughs> Oprah Daily is 50% yeah. off today. Yes, yes. 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 Get up. That was good. You are yeah. alive. That's right. <laughs> Tori, Adam, thank you both. Excellent you. as always. And we partner with these companies on these great deals. You can get them at our website.
where you will also find bonus deals. And thank you to Oprah as well. Now let's go to Ginger. Hey, Ginger. Hey, Michael. I'm feeling alive given this forecast for the marathon because it is going to be pretty perfect. I mean, light winds. You'll have a temperature in the morning in the 40s, low 40s. And by the afternoon, even as some of the later runners coming in, it won't be above 60 degrees. So that is great. But also, there are a bunch of marathon runners this year that are part of a nonprofit New York Roadrunners team for climate. And I am representing them. They're lacing up to bring attention to the sustainable advances that the marathon has made this year. The runners will take the most sustainable transportation, of course. And you see me there. I'm participating in our warm up, which we're going to be doing today, a shakeout run called Plogging. You run and you pick up trash. Like, can we see anything more me? <laughs> and we're going to be doing that today to get ahead of everything. Uh, but of course, there's so many more things that the marathon's doing to be more sustainable. So you can go on my social and find some of that. All right, we turn now to the holiday celebrated by more than a billion people around the world. It is Diwali, the annual festival of lights. The holiday is bigger than ever here and also big business. And Ashan Singh is here with more. Good morning, Ashan. Good morning, Rebecca, and happy Diwali, guys. It's one of the most important holidays in the Hindu religion, and it's also celebrated by Sikhs, Jains, Buddhists, and Muslims worldwide. From corporations to local boutiques, we took a look at the explosion of the Festival of Lights. It's the biggest and brightest holiday for more than a billion people worldwide. Diwali, the Festival of Lights. A celebration of good triumphing over evil and light over darkness. Across the US, dazzling festivities, with more and more major companies spotlighting the holiday. From Costco, Walmart, Target, Bath & Body Works, Party City, Williams-Sonoma, even the Orlando Magic, hosting the NBA's first ever Diwali night. And Mattel, launching this new Diwali Barbie, selling out in just 24 hours. The kind of emotion that we're getting for the doll, it's unreal. Designed by globally renowned Indian fashion designer Anita Dongre, the Barbie wearing traditional jewelry, a choli top, and a lenga skirt with dahlias, jasmines, and an Indian lotus, representing strength and beauty. I wanted Indian young girls all over the world to see themselves in this doll. So I can't lie, that Barbie Diwali drip got me a little jealous, so I'm trying to get fitted myself. Let's go. We're at Nazrana, a family-owned bridal boutique with the largest selection of South Asian garments in the U.S. Why are people coming in and wanting to show out for, for the holiday? For people who are outside of their country, right? They want to hold their cultures. It's our Christmas. We had to try on some fits for all sorts of Diwali occasions. This is for a nice party. Semi-formal, not like extremely formal, but still very nice. A simple classic, the kurta pajama. The traditional independence classic fit. Yep. And it's so comfortable. For the best of both worlds, some fusion wear. So this is called an Indo-Western. This is for a more formal event. If you're trying to level up, this is what you would wear to a really fancy Diwali party. And we save the best for last. This is about as Diwali as it gets. Exactly. So light up your Diwali with this light up kurta. If you properly feel like it's happy Diwali. Yeah, festival of lights. Yep. There it is. And guys, this feels so surreal. As a kid, we often had to explain this holiday to our friends and our peers. And now I'm on GMA in my Diwali best. It really is special to be able to share this holiday as the South Asian community with you guys. We love it. And we, you are a bright light here. And it is not just because of your kurta. You, you are always a bright light. And happy Diwali to you and your family. Appreciate you guys. Happy Diwali. Thank you, Ashan. Coming up, Lance Bass's message to fellow diabetics on this first day of National Diabetes Month. Stay with us. Welcome back. Let's now talk about the millions in the U.S. with diabetes, many of whom are going undiagnosed, and that's why it's so important to raise awareness as we kick off this National Diabetes Month. Now, this segment is sponsored by Dexcom, the makers of a wearable system that could help diabetics of all ages and stages manage the disease, and that group includes NSYNC's Lance Bass. Lance Bass shot to superstardom in the late 90s Baby, bye, bye, bye. as one-fifth of the best-selling boy band in sync. More recently, the Grammy-nominated singer, dancer, actor, and podcaster had also been charting a course as husband and father of two. When he learned something life-changing about his health. 
I got diagnosed with type 2 diabetes a few years ago. My doctor was telling me I was pre-diabetic for a couple of years and I got my blood work back and my A1C was 10. Uh, which is really, really bad. Bass discovering he was one of the estimated 136 million adults that are living with diabetes or pre-diabetes in the United States. But then he revealed in July on Instagram that he had been misdiagnosed and was actually living with type 1.5 diabetes, also called latent autoimmune diabetes, which accounts for three to 11% of adult onset cases. Being a diabetic, it's a full-time job you're constantly thinking about all the little things you have to do throughout the day that nobody really realizes. I grew up in Mississippi, you know, we love fried food, we love everything sugary. It does change your life in the way that you do eat. And now Bass is a spokesperson for our sponsor Dexcom to bring awareness to the chronic disease. Dexcom to me has been the leaders. They're there for everyone, no matter what stage diabetic you are. But I just wanted to bring their message to life and encourage people to check out their glucose. Just go into the Dexcom website. We'll help start your journey. Lance also sharing how he uses the Dexcom G7, a more advanced wearable biosensor for those who are on insulin. With the G7, it's so simple. You put it against your skin right there, press down, and boom! Didn't feel a thing. I download my G7 app, and then it'll start just continuously monitoring your glucose, and uh, you know exactly how much insulin you might need. Dexcom also offering Stello, the first glucose biosensor available without a prescription. Designed for those living with type 2 diabetes and not on insulin, or pre-diabetic or just looking to track your glucose for health. Actress Retta has type 2 diabetes. I'm partnering with Stello to learn more about my glucose. Uncontrolled diabetes can lead to serious health issues. Meanwhile, Bass says at age 45, he's finally in sync with his body and looking forward to brighter days ahead with his family. I had kids at a later age, so I want to be there as long as I can. I love being able to cook with them and show them like the healthier alternatives. Because of this diagnosis, I feel better, I'm happier. It's a beautiful thing to have that peace of mind. I learned a couple of things with Lance sharing his story. Now, one of the reasons he wanted to share that story is to empower people with the information they need to live well with diabetes, to show how diet, activity, and even sleep can impact your overall health. You can learn more if this story resonated with you by going to GMA social channels. <laughs> <laughs> GMA runners are here. They are getting ready to run the big marathon on Sunday. It's going to be a special marathon Sunday this year. You can watch live coverage on WABC all morning, also from 8 a.m. to 11.30 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. And new this year, there's a two-hour finish line special from 3 to 5 right here on ABC. They'll smile the big now. They'll be bigger on Sunday when they complete this race. Good night.